Hello and welcome to the Sonoran Desert. Uh, my name is Jessie and I'm going to be telling you a little bit about the adaptations of plants to the desert. So I wanted to start by talking about what a desert is. So do you think you know that already? I'd love for you to take a second and think about what makes a desert a desert. Okay, um, a lot of people will say because it's hot or because it doesn't rain very much. And while these things are usually true, um, the technical definition of what a desert is, is because someplace that's very, very dry. And so we call that aridity or like it's, it's very arid, means it's very dry. And that's that feeling where if you go outside and it like feels like it's sucking all the moisture out of your body. Um, and that is aridity, okay? Um, there are four different deserts in North America, and they are the Great Basin, the Mojave Desert, the Chihuahuan Desert, and the Sonoran Desert, which is where we are right now. And each one of those, you can tell which one it is kind of because of what kinds of plants live there. Um, and so the Sonoran Desert, you can tell, you know you're in the Sonoran Desert when you see um, saguaro cactuses. So there's a saguaro right there. They're the ones with the arms from cartoons. Um, and also these uh, special kinds of trees that are in the bean family, which I'll show to you a bit later, some of those. Um, so bean trees and saguaro cacti, you are in the Sonoran Desert, um, especially the those saguaros, they don't live anywhere else in the world. So today we're talking specifically about adaptations of plants to the desert. And so an adaptation is anything that helps a living thing survive better in its particular place. So for in this case, what we're talking about is ways that plants have figured out to help them survive better in a place that's really, really dry and often very hot and sometimes doesn't rain very much, okay? But mostly that aridity, the dryness. How do you survive in a place where it's very, very dry and you have to protect all the water that you can find? Okay. Um, and so you can think about an adaptation like it helps you live in one place, but not another. So if you were to pick up this saguaro cactus and move it to a tropical rainforest, do you think it would be okay? The answer is no, it would not be okay. Um, that saguaro would not survive very well. It, it's adapted to this place and not any other one. So there are three main strategies that plants have developed in order to survive in a place like the desert. Um, and they are uh, being drought avoidant, being drought tolerant, and um, the strategy of succulents. And so we'll talk about each one of those. The one I'm not going to be able to show you is um, drought avoidant. And here's why, uh, because we are actually in a drought right now. So you can imagine that every plant that is drought avoidant is currently not here. Um, and so we think of that as like the, the seasonal wildflowers. If you've ever seen pictures of the big blooms of flowers in the desert, those are drought avoidant flowers who it rains in the late um, late winter, early spring, and they pop up and they hurry up and make a bunch of seeds and distribute them. And uh, that's it. And then they disappear once it gets dry again. So that's drought avoidant. The next strategy we'll see is what's called the drought tolerant strategy. And this is where plants have figured out ways to deal with the extreme dryness and lack of water that don't involve just disappearing when it's not raining. Okay. We'll start here with this lovely friend. It's called an ocotillo. And so you can see, I'll back up so you can see the full thing. It's very, very tall. It has these long leafy spikes that also have spines on them, which a lot of desert plants have spines like that. Um, so the thing that you don't see is that most of the time, Ocotillos do not have leaves. So this plant is what's what we call drought deciduous. And if you've heard the word deciduous before, it's what happens when trees like in, in forests and in the East Coast, um, they'll drop their leaves when it's cold out. Um, drought deciduous is sort of like that, except they drop their leaves when it's dry out. So when it rains, um, these plants quickly put on leaves so that they can photosynthesize and then when it gets dry the leaves turn yellow and they fall off and so this can happen multiple times a year. Most of the year an ocotillo might just look like this dead spiky stick with no leaves. 
Another plant with a drought deciduous strategy is this cool green tree called a palo verde, which if you know any Spanish, palo verde means green stick. Um, so I bet you can't guess why it's called a green stick. Yes, I bet you can. Um, so the palo verde also is drought deciduous. So you see these teeny, teeny, teeny baby leaves. Can you see the teeny baby leaves? Yes. Um, so it has leaves during a lot of the year. And then if it gets too dry, those leaves fall off to let it, um, uh, to save some, some moisture loss. But wait, I hear you asking, why might having leaves not be a good thing in the desert? Um, that's a great question. So let's think about what leaves do. So the green part of the leaves is because they do photosynthesis using a thing called chlorophyll. Um, and so what that is, is they're essentially turning sunlight into food for the plant, right? So that's cool. So that's what the green part is. But also they're big and broad. And if you look under a microscope, um, leaves have a lot of what we call stomata. They're like teeny, teeny, teeny little holes. And those holes help with respiration or transpiration. Um, and so what that is, like how we, respiration for us means we breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. But plants do the other way around, right? So they breathe in carbon dioxide through the tiny holes in their leaves and breathe out oxygen for us to breathe. That's why we're best friends with plants, right? 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 Um, so, um, so that's cool. But the other thing that happens is when they exhale oxygen for us to breathe, they also let out water. So kind of like if you've ever done the thing where you stick your face up to the bathroom mirror and you like, and then you can make it, it gets kind of foggy. Same thing, um, plants exhale a little bit of water. That part's called transpiration. Um, so, so they're using their leaves to make their own food through photosynthesis and for transpiration and respiration, right? So they're exhaling oxygen and they're exhaling water at the same time. All of that is to say, if you live in a desert and you're a plant and it's really dry, probably not the best idea to have a big giant surface full of tiny holes through which you're losing water. You with me? Yeah, so for that reason, it might be a good idea to get rid of some of your leaves when you can to minimize that water loss. So can you guess why the branches of the Palo Verde are green? Um, let me give you a hint. The purpose of leaves, right, the reason they're green is to photosynthesize because there's a thing called chlorophyll in there that helps the plant with photosynthesis. So if, for instance, a tree spent a lot of the year without leaves, or it dropped its leaves a lot, um, then you might think it would still want food, right? And so what it does is it photosynthesizes using its trunk. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, drought tolerant and drought avoidance are cool, but you all came to the desert for cacti and I am not going to disappoint. So here we are, we've got a ton of them. Um, cacti and also things like, I don't have any around here, but um, if you can picture like an agave, so it's like a big chunky leaf plant, kind of like an aloe plant, if you're familiar with what they look like, those plants are what we call succulents. So succulents uh, is the third strategy, major strategy of plant adaptation. And so what that means is they actually will suck up water and store it inside of their body, inside of their tissues to use later. Um, now this doesn't mean like if you see in a cartoon, you've probably seen where people like chop down a cactus and like drink water out of it. You can't actually do that. Um, and that's because they store it in their tissues and they really don't want animals to drink it. So oftentimes if you tried to eat the flesh of a cactus to get some water, you'd end up really, really sick because there's chemicals in there too, because they don't really want you to do that. Um, also, there's a lot of defenses. Maybe you've noticed uh, with cacti, they have defenses against things, chopping them down and eating them. Those are spines. Let's go look at them. Would you look at this beautiful saguaro cactus? So they're big, and they're really, 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 really tall. Whoa, so I'd estimate this one is probably like mm, 30 feet tall, 
which makes it still kind of a baby. Uh, these guys can grow 50 or 60 feet tall um, in good conditions. They also are very slow growing, which is a characteristic of succulents um, for reasons that we can't really get into right now. But they're really slow growing, so much so that a little baby saguaro that's 10 years old might only be an inch and a half tall. Sometimes, do you see, so this one has arms, it takes them a long time to start growing those arms. See this one in the background there? Boop, that guy. Um, that one has not started growing arms. It could be 20 or 30 years old. Um, sometimes it takes a really long time to start growing arms because they're so slow growing. They also can live sometimes 150 to 200 years. Okay, let's look up close at these cactus spines. So you can see on the saguaro, they're very spiky. I'm going to reach out and touch them gently. Um, they're very spiky and they're protecting. I'm going to reach through this flesh. So this is its skin is pretty hardened. It's pretty uh, sealed to keep that water in there. Um, did you, do you notice that the cactus doesn't appear to have any leaves? That's weird, right? But I bet you can guess how it photosynthesizes based on what color it is, right? So just like the Palo Verde, which Boop, it's right there. Um, just like the Palo Verde, the saguaro cactus can photosynthesize inside of its skin because it's green. But if you thought that it did not have leaves, you would be mistaken because it turns out that spines are just modified leaves. So over the course of evolution, the plant has reduced its leaves in order to stop losing water and it's turned them into a defense against predators, which I think is so cool. So defending itself against predators. One other thing about saguaros, do you see how it's all kind of pleated like an accordion, like it's bent in and in and in? That's because we're in a drought. So inside of this plant is a woody structure um, that sort of builds, makes these pleats look like that. And if it had just rained and it was full of water, the whole body of the plant would actually expand. It's so cute to come out in the desert after the rain because the saguaros, this one's very thirsty, so it's all crinkled up. But if it were, if it had just had a big drink of water, it like inflates like a big cute barrel and they're all just like plump and chubby. And that's how you know they're really happy and full of water because all their water stores are restored. Saguaros are not, of course, the only cactus in the desert. There's lots, including this really, really pretty one. Check that out. This is a fishhook barrel cactus. It's actually pretty tall. So I'd say it's like eh, four feet tall. And look at these beautiful flowers. Oh my gosh, I love them so much. Pollinators love them. And they turn into this fruit that is totally edible. Here's a cute little baby fish at barrel cactus. So it's done blooming, but it's getting ready to, those fruits are ripening. Look at the size of these fish hooks, like holy cow. Cool, right? That's a good defense. One other very cool desert plant is the prickly pear. Um, so these are really cool cactus. So they're also use the strategy of succulents. Um, they're also a really important food plant for indigenous people in this area. That's the, the native people, the people who've been here for thousands of years. You can eat their fruit um, if you're careful, there's spines on it. You could also eat their pads, which are called nopales. Um, these guys have cool protections. Look at those spines. They have the big ones like the saguaro, but also, I don't know if you can see, they have these teeny, teeny, teeny little hair spines called glockids. And those get in your fingers and it hurts a lot and it's really hard to get out. It's a very cool plant. There's a bunch of species. It's a really beautiful place out here. If you get a chance to visit, I recommend you do it. Also, just like trees, you can totally hug cacti. You just have to be very careful and gentle.